The interview I'm about to do is a very extraordinary one and a very tough one in many ways because I'm not sure yet how to do it myself, but I think we'll all find out together. I ask uh, your patience and your interest and a chance for this gentleman to be heard. Over 20 years ago, it would have been impossible to have this man sit before an American audience. He was the commander of the task force that bombed Pearl Harbor. For three months, he trained the men, planned the strategy, picked the day, ordered the bombs. He ordered the bombs that were dropped that crippled our Navy and brought the United States into World War II. One of the struck ships, the USS Arizona, still rests at the bottom of the harbor, now a memorial as well as a steel graveyard for its crew. After the attack, he drank champagne in a victory party for his accomplishment. His story from that day on, I think you'll find a most interesting one. This is Captain Mitsuo Fuchida. He does not speak English, and this young gentleman to his right is an interpreter. They have not met, I understand, until tonight. His name is, is it Mr. Tashiaki Taga? Did I pronounce that all right? That's right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fuchida, after Pearl Harbor, did you think you would win the war? I thought 50-50. 50-50, uh -huh. right. Were you, were you rewarded for your mission? After the Pearl Harbor, when I came back to Japan, Emperor called me to the palace, and he decorated me the best medal. The emperor, mm -hmm. that was uh, at Hirohito? Hirohito, yes. Yes, at, uh, and he decorated you yeah. at the palace, right. Now, was the plan to invade Hawaii or eventually occupy the United States? There was no plans to invade Hawaii or absolutely to occupy the United States mainland. You did not necessarily want to attack the mainland of uh -huh. the United States, mm -hmm. right. When did, you, when did you feel the war was lost? When the Guadalcanal campaign was going on. Guadalcanal? Uh -huh. But that was very early. Did you know the then? Ne next year. And you knew then that the war was lost? Yeah, I felt. Because of the Germans? Was it because of the Germans starting to fail in Europe? That's right. Right. Japanese victory relied upon German's victory. And then, at that time, German is already uh, dooming. I see. Now, did you consider your mission a duty only, or at that time, did you hate America? It was absolutely on duty. There was no room of hate for occupational officer. You did not hate America? That's right. Ah, it was just a duty? That's right. I see. Uh, what were your feelings right after the war? Were you glad to see the war end? Naturally, I was glad to see the end of the war. Mm -hmm. Hiroshima, what were your feelings about Hiroshima and the bombing of it? It was a disaster. But it saved a half a million lives. Saved a half a million lives. Mm -hmm. uh, with, without it, you know. But the uh, causality was quarter million with bomb. I see, I see. What was your opinion of Tojo? Tojo was a representative of the former Japanese army, you know. He was? He was a represent representative of the former military right. army. Did you like him? At that time, I disliked him. Because, you disliked him? Uh -huh, because the Japanese Navy and the Army fighting against each other. <laughs> they were fighting against each other over there? <laughs> Some we didn't know. <laughs> May I ask your opinion of MacArthur? Oh, MacArthur was a great man. He had done great things. He had done great things. Mm -hmm. Were you happy to see him come to Japan after the war and start to rebuild? Oh, yes. Yes. He was welcomed by all Japanese. Mm -hmm. Now, since the war, Mr. Fushida was converted to Christianity. He has a son and daughter who are US citizens. He is employed now preaching Christianity on the West Coast. Are you planning to become an American citizen, Mr. Fushida? Yes, yeah. yes you are. Later. Yes. Later. Would you tell the story of how you found out about Christianity? <clears throat> 
when the war ended, since Japan lost the war, I was still uh, resentful. You but were still I, resentful when mm -hmm, Japan lost mm -hmm. the war. But at the time, uh, many missionaries came to Japan, and 100 missionaries were in Tokyo. So at the time, I was in Tokyo, and one day I was uh, walking a street. You were walking? I, I was walking a street in Tokyo. On a street in Tokyo. And there I saw an American missionary who was handing out leaflet to the Japanese people, you know. And I was given a copy of the pamphlet. That tells the story of American flyer who was a member of the Demi Little Squadron. That bombed the Tokyo. Wait, now, it told the story of an American flyer. Would you help me, Mr. Yes, the Doolittle yes. Squadron? That's the, right. Of the uh, Doolittle Squadron. Doolittle. Do do ah. And when uh, he participated as a bombardier, you know, bombardier. Bombardment. Uh, so he dropped many bombs against uh, Tokyo. He was very satisfied taking the revenge. But after the bombing, they flew away to China. And on his way to China, gasoline ran out. And he, the crew had to parachute into the Japanese-occupied territory in China. So the next morning, he was captured. You know. And he was taken a prisoner of war in Japan. And while he was in prison, he read the Bible. And while reading the Bible, he met Christ. Then his hatred changed to love. And his hatred? hatred? His hatred changed into love. And after the war, you know, war ended, he came back to Japan as a missionary. And he now loves the people in Japan. This story touched upon my heart. Uh, and, and, and one thing, uh, this story inspired me one thing, you know, that it was when he read the Bible that he hatred changed to love. So this inspired me to get the Bible so that I could read this wonderful book for myself, by myself, you know. And I bought a Bible, and while I was reading the Bible, I met Christ. This is my question. <laughs> we'll be right back. Do you still believe in war, Mr. Fushida? I believe the complete peace of the world through Christ, you know. So, I did not believe to keep the peace by the human knowledge. So I believe still we exist in this world. Where were you, Mr. Eyre, at that time, the attack of Pearl Harbor? I was working for the FBI in Washington when my superiors were trying to convince some of the powers that be that Mr. Fushida's people were on their way or that this was being planned. <laughs> Strange world, isn't yeah. it? Yes. And here we all are on a stage in New York, 23 years later. <laughs> it's even longer than that. Is it? No, it's, no, that was 19... 1941. 1941, December the 7th. Uh, and you couldn't convince anyone in Washington? Well, I was not the man who was trying to do this. I was a younger agent then, but my superiors were trying to. What did you know at that time? There had been certain intercepts of telephone conversations, some decoding of various kinds. Actually, I was ordered back after three days of my honeymoon, which was on the 16th of November. I was ordered back to Washington on the 19th because it was believed that war was imminent. Mm -hmm. At least this is what Mr. Hoover thought. Mm -hmm. And he has been a pretty smart man. Yes, he has. You betcha he has. What uh, were you then? Did you remain with the FBI? Uh, yes, I was with them for five years, two of which overseas during our war. But I was in the European theater. And I'll never forget what happened in San Francisco the day of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And I remember we all heard it coming out of uh, Mass on Sunday. And everybody drove out to the beach that night. Thousands and thousands and thousands of cars. It was one of the worst traffic jams in history to watch the Japanese arrive. This is true. It is true. It is Thank you, Mr. Eyre, for coming on. Thank you, Mr. Fushida, <laughs> Mr. Tata.